Hello everyone, I'm Jinjinx. And I'm Tuna. And, and we're, we're the, the Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter Math Guys. guys. You probably know that I am a Mathalos main, but what you may not know about me is that I'm also a call to Roth main. She's actually Jinx's waifu. They were married last spring, it was a wonderful wedding. My team and I have researched, tested, analyzed, and speedrun her since she came out all those months ago on console, and we learned pretty much everything about her mechanics. And now that she is coming out for PC, we are here to share all of that cumulative knowledge with you guys. We actually already have advanced guides on how to most effectively farm Colve Teroth. Links to those are in the top right. However, these assume that you have some basic knowledge of Katie already. What we'll be covering in this video is how Katie's fight is a bit different than other monsters, how the relic system works, what is pursuit and reward level, how does the 16 person siege work, best weapons and builds to use against KT, and which weapons to keep. So first off, what's the point of fighting KT? Well, for one thing, her glam as fuck armor becomes a staple on pretty much every build in the game. However, the main reason is because KT is a boss ass bitch of an elder dragon who over the years has had so many golden weapons embedded in her, she is now covered in them. When you complete the siege, you receive a random selection of these relic weapons as rewards. Many of these ones you get, like the Rarity 6 weapons, are pretty much trash. However, many of them are the absolute best weapons in the game, like the coveted Rarity 7 Glutton Heavy Boga, which is a literal monster blender. So let's explain how you get these weapons. There are three levels of unidentified relics that you can collect. Dissolved weapons, also known as trash, melded weapons, which can rarely drop you an R7, and sublimated, which has the best chance of dropping R8s and R7. Also a big thank you to Hex Hex Hex. Hex is the one who found the numbers that we have listed on screen. He is a phenomenal data miner, modder, and overall numbers guy. In fact, he was the one who originally taught me all of the various formulas related to Monster Hunter World when I was brand new to the game. Without him, this channel literally would not exist. So definitely go follow him on Twitter, as well as check out his Nexus Mods account, link to those in the description. For obvious reasons, you want to focus on collecting sublimated. You get these unidentified relics from the rewards when you beat her, and also you can sometimes get them from carving. When a group in your session beats her, these weapons are then identified and it's pure RNG what they will be. That's right! When any group in your session beats Katie, the siege ends. Everyone gets rewards regardless of who broke the horns. You don't actually have to have 16 people in the server, you're still only limited to 4 persons in the hunt. However, each hunting party does share two important things, pursuit level, and to a lesser degree, reward points. Pursuit level is how hard the hunt will be. Every pursuit level roughly halves her HP thresholds and increases her leaving timer. Basically, pursuit level 2 aka a P2 is about twice as easy as a P1, and a P3 is twice as easy as a P2, etc. Their pursuit level increases every time someone in the session picks up Katie tracks. However, once you start, your pursuit level is locked in. It will not increase mid-hunt. Higher pursuit levels are much easier, which is why the common strategy for KT is to raise the pursuit level in the first round of hunts. Then, because the pursuit level is higher for the second round, you beat her there. This is going to be your general strategy in public sessions if you do not have a team to coordinate with. However, this does take about twice as long to complete the siege as a P1 hunt. If you're interested in learning how to do that instead, then we'd recommend checking out our advanced KT guides. Next up, we have the reward system. Rewards are given based on special objectives completed. These are things like hitting different stages of the fight, hitting higher pursuit levels, and breaking parts. Anytime these are accomplished in your hunting party, you get full credit for these. When the siege ends, if there are any objectives that you have not completed but someone else in the session has, you get half credit. The reward level to aim for is 14 out of 17. At 14 rewards, you have the max amount of gold boxes possible. And gold boxes by far have the highest chance to drop sublimated weapons. And believe it or not, it's actually easy to achieve on phase 1. Alright, let's talk about how the KT fight works because it is very different from any other fight in the game. So first off, there are two forms KT takes, clothed and naked. There are also four areas to the siege. In area 1 through 3, KT will be in her clothed form. In area 4, she will be naked. Also, whenever you deal enough damage to clothe KT, she will go red hot. During this time, her hit zone values roughly double and melee weapons get to use weakness exploit against her. 
This is great because you want to break parts. Not only does this increase your reward level, but it's also how you release her to get her naked, which you have to do to break her horns and complete the siege. If you want to learn a little bit more about her release conditions, then check out our advanced guides. But for right now, part breaks is good. Also, breaking Katie's golden horn plating will knock her down. This gives you a good opportunity for some free damage. And you can possibly carve a weapon if you're lucky. Alright, let's briefly discuss the areas. If you want to learn more about the areas, check out our advanced guides because we go a lot more in-depth about them. So in area 1, Katie will basically just slowly creep around. You can clear this area by simply damaging her enough. You can use rock drops, cannons, mega bombs, and beating on her with your weapons to do this. Area 2 is where the real fight starts. From area 2 on, she will be actively attacking you. After a few minutes, she'll transition to area 3. Area 3 is filled with lava, so be sure to pop a cool drink. There are three rocks that you can drop on Katie in this room. If you do well, this stage will only last a couple minutes. Katie will then release and head into area 4. If you are doing the normal strategy and it is pursuit level 1, then this is where you would leave the quest in order to come back and complete the siege at a higher pursuit level. There is no reason to go into area 4 unless you intend to complete the siege in this hunt, it's just a waste of time. So area 4 is the hardest part of the siege by far. At pursuit level 1, KT has 45,000 horn HP, which is a lot considering you have a little under 6 minutes to fight her in area 4. She is also much faster and more aggressive here. We go very in-depth into how to best fight her in Area 4 in our advanced guides. Alright, let's now discuss what weapons are best against KT. We recommend that you bring two builds. Firstly, because KT has different weaknesses pre and post release. And secondly, because Part Breaker has absolutely no effect post release. Also, try to fit in Bombardier. Katie takes double damage from bombs, and it's highly recommended for making Phase 1 runs easier. When making a ranged weapon set, do not use Wex. It doesn't work on Katie except on her white chest spikes, which you want to avoid hitting. The handler will tell you that you have to hit the white chest thingy in order to make her red hot, but she is a lying whore. Damage anywhere will make her molten, and it's always best to focus on the parts because you can also work on breaking them. Now, even though Weakness Exploit does not work on ranged weapons, they are still some of the top choices for KT. This is because her elemental weaknesses are f***ing stupid. She has a 50 hit zone value to Thunder when clothed, and the same to Ice when she is naked, which is about equal to a 6 star weakness. For clothed KT, the three best weapons are Thunder Light Bowgun, Thunder Bow, and Thunder Dual Blades. Thunder Light Bowgun deals the absolute highest damage against KT. A well-angled shot can deal well over 400. However, its damage is more spread out, not as concentrated as the Thunder Bow and the Thunder Dual Blades. This means that the Light Bow Gun can struggle breaking specific parts. Other than that, anything works well as long as it isn't non-elemental shot damage. Her Dragon Hit Zone values are relatively high as well, which makes Devil Joe weapons a very impressive option. Also, just to nip this in the bud, Dragon Piercer is not that good against KT. It is at best average against her, and there are just much better options to use. The long windup of it makes it unsafe, which can lead to carts, and it also makes it hard to line up good shots because she rotates a lot anytime she targets a new hunter. Plus, a Thunder Light Bowgun can match your Dragon Piercer's damage in 1 to 2 shots while being much more mobile and safe. And the other weapon choices deal much higher concentrated damage, which is very valuable for pop breaks. As for Naked KT, Ice Damage is very nice, as well as pretty much anything that is a non elemental shot type damage. She just in general has very high hit zone values to everything except for shot. Ice Dual Blades are the highest pure damage option, however, they struggle to hit her when she isn't crowd controlled. Great Sword, Hammer, Switch Axe, Sword and Shield, and IG are very solid, both because they can deal very high damage even when she's moving, but also because they have very high mounting power. Her Dragon Hit Zone values are also still 35, so Joe weapons are very solid choices. Ice Bow is also very strong due to its high damage uptime. And Ice and Slicing Light Bowgun have extremely high damage uptime, but they don't deal the most DPS. Very good in a two-run hunt style though. Also in Area 4, CC is very valuable. For this, Bow and Heavy Bowgun work best. If you would like to learn how to handle Area 4, then be sure to check out our advanced guides. 
We know a lot of you want builds to take on Katie, so we compiled a list of optimal builds for her. Link for that in the description. Finally, what weapons should you keep from Katie? We still aren't sure if PC will get the same weapon pool as consoles, or if you'll get the extra 14 R8s that got added on later, so to be safe, we included all of them. The good ones from the second wave will be in parenthesis. As a general rule, you should keep all of your R8s anyway. So for Great Sword, nothing beats the gas powered stick. For Longsword, the R8 Fire LS is about it. For SNS, you have the Rarity 7 Rage, R7 Mud, R8 Water, and R8 Fire. For Dual Blades, you also have the R7 Rage, R8 Ice, R8 Water, and R7 Spark. For Hammer, there is only the R8 Sleep. For Hunting Horn, there is also only the R8 Sleep. For Lance, you want to get our Lord and Savior, the R7 Claw. For Gunlance, you have the R8 Poison, R8 Sleep, R8 Water, and R7 King. However, any level 4 Shelling Gunlance is a good Gunlance. For good old Switch Axe, you want the R8 Para and the R8 Water. For Charge Blade, the only thing that beats the Blow CB is the R7 Horn, because it has 10 more defense. LOL. Also, the R8 Water is nice against Toaster. For IG, the R8 Ice is nice against Luna and KT, and the R8 Water is nice against Toaster, but otherwise there's really nothing. For Light Bowgun, you have the R8 Pierce, R8 Shot, R8 Spread, and R8 Support. For Heavy Bowgun, you get the Monster Blender, R8 Support, and R7 Horn. And finally, Bow gets R8 Water, R8 Thunder, R7 Queen, and R8 Fire. That about does it guys, we have much more in-depth guides to KT on our channel, definitely check them out if you would like to learn more about Culve. Also, because we know that KT is more fun in a group, Tuna set us up a new Discord server, the Mathalos Nest. We have specific looking for group channels in there for each console for hunters to group up in, as well as plenty of hunting group channels so you can communicate with each other. Link to the Discord will be in the description. And remember, KT is best taken on with the team, so be sure to share the video with your friends and squadmates. We're gonna make a full video explaining the PC Katie builds that we posted in that album, so be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon down there if you want to be notified when that video comes out. If you enjoyed the video, please leave us a like. If you found out something new, let us know in the comments. Happy hunting hunters! Good luck with your KT weapon drop RNG, and Tuna and I will see you next time. Bye! Bye.